So, about that debate that was um that was traumatizing. <laughs> that was a shit show. I mean, it was everything I expected it to be, but still I wasn't ready for that. America deserves better. And coming away from this, I don't even know if there is a definitive winner. Because all that we got was chaos. It was madness. Chris Wallace was just unable to rein in Donald Trump. There was zero substance. There were some digs at um, Bernie Sanders and the left. Donald Trump contradicted himself multiple times. Edmund not shut up. I don't know any average voter who doesn't consume politics as frequently as you and I who's going to come away from this thinking, wow, that was really enlightening and in fact we know that people do not come away from this feeling energized or optimistic or feeling as if they are more informed when making their decision because early polls show that um that's not necessarily the case take a look at this poll this is from cbs and yougov and when asked how did the debate make you feel 17 percent said informed 19 percent said pessimistic 31% said entertained, and 61% said annoyed. Nice. I would agree. When you have the overwhelming majority of Americans coming away from a presidential debate feeling annoyed, I just can't help but think we could have had better. I know that this is, you know, um, sour grapes, but Bernie would have demolished Donald Trump. Now, to the extent that there is a winner... I think that Joe Biden was the winner, and we're going to get into this. I think that he's the winner, not necessarily because he had a stunning performance. I think actually his debate performance was weaker here than it was in the debate against Bernie Sanders, the one-on-one -on -one debate, the last debate of the Democratic Party primary. But the reason why I think that it makes sense to characterize Joe Biden as the winner, even if this is subjective is because Joe Biden is currently in the lead and Donald Trump is the one who currently has to move the needle. This is the one debate where it's the first one between them. Everyone wants to see them face off. Millions of people are going to be tuning in for the first time. Might not watch the second and third debates. So you got to make that first impression or second first impression, at least on a debate stage in this cycle, if we're talking about Donald Trump. And I think that Donald Trump, he wasn't able to to read the room. But before I tell you why I think Biden probably won, even though I think that is debatable, um, let's get to some polls because it seems as if others tend to agree with that sentiment. An online poll from PBS and CNN found that 60% of people viewed Biden as the winner and 28% thought Trump won. A Data for Progress poll found that 51% of viewers thought Biden was the winner and 39% thought Trump was the winner, although there are 10% that are undecided. This is a sample of 250 people taken online. So it seems as if people are kind of gravitating towards Joe Biden, and I tend to agree with that. Now, let me tell you why. Again, this wasn't a stunning performance, but basically the bar was very, very low in this debate. All Joe Biden needed to do was not completely face plant, and I don't believe he face planted. Um, but at the beginning, I wasn't so sure because it was really clear that Trump's overly aggressive demeanor, it rattled Joe Biden. It threw him off. And you could actually tell that emotionally, Trump was starting to get to him and poke at him. And he was fumbling. But eventually, I think there were times where he found his mojo. And there were some moments, particularly when Joe Biden hit Trump on COVID and the economy, where I think that it landed. And I think that if you are looking for a leader and you're undecided, Joe Biden came off as the more capable adult expectedly. But here's the thing. People oftentimes in choosing leaders, they want someone who exhibits strength. And Donald Trump could be easily perceived to be the individual who's more strong. But that's if we accept the fact that people believe interrupting, being overly aggressive is a sign of strength. You could argue that maybe it was Joe Biden who came across as the more stronger candidate because he kind of stood up to that bully. You know, that schoolyard bully, he didn't back down. There were times when, you know, he 
stood up to Donald Trump, clowned on him, you know, uh, called him a clown, told him to shut the hell, shut the hell up. And there was even this moment, which I loved, where he made fun of Donald Trump for his comment about injecting bleach. They're going to be this delivering is the to same us. man. It's who all told set you up by Easter. This had be gone away by the warm weather. It'd be gone. Miraculous, like a miracle. And by the way, maybe you could inject some bleach in your arm and that would take care of it. This is the that same man. That was said sarcastically, that was and you him, know that. I, that I, was said sarcastically. And so here's the deal. That was great. And uh, no, Trump, nobody believes that you were being sarcastic. Nobody believes that. You're embarrassed. So you can tell that Biden got to him. But having said that, even though Biden did hold his own, and I can see how the average normie voter would perceive, could perceive either one as being stronger. You know, the thing is that at a time when we see unprecedented crises taking place, you know, a pandemic, uh, an economic depression, just being belligerent and loud probably isn't going to do it. I'm sure that Donald Trump's voters, his sycophants, MAGA cultists, absolutely were thrilled with his performance because, you know, Trump gave them exactly what they wanted. But at the end of the day, it seems as if Trump wasn't able to read the room properly. Like in 2016, I can see how this sort of performance would have landed potentially because that was an anti-establishment election cycle. Everyone was just frustrated with eight years of Obama and neoliberalism. And even if you weren't necessarily supporting Donald Trump, it was at least entertaining to see him take on Hillary Clinton and criticize her. But now, you know, the mood is different in the country. People, they are worried. You know, they are fearful of what's to come. They want to get COVID-19 under control. This is the number one issue. And you know, if you're judging this debate based on who's going to be more capable of handling this pandemic, I think it's obvious that Donald Trump is just not a serious person. And it's almost surprising how poorly Trump performed when discussing COVID-19. So Joe Biden knocked him, of course, for 200,000 deaths because of his bungling of COVID-19. And what does Donald Trump say in response? Oh, well, if you were president, there would have been 2 million deaths. That's not persuasive at all. You can't prove that. You're just spitballing. And if you're going to use that number, why not say 3 million or 4 million? I mean, you're already being hyperbolic and bombastic. Like, this doesn't make sense for you to say that. And the worst thing that Trump could ever say, you know, to uh, Joe Biden and him not being capable of dealing with this virus is he brought up swine flu. If you're Donald Trump, you never want to mention swine flu. If you're Joe Biden, you want to brag about sw about swine flu because that's something that you got under control. But who brought that up? It was Donald Trump who brought that up, which is astonishing because when you contrast Joe Biden's handling of swine flu in the Obama administration to Donald Trump's handling of COVID-19, which we all are dealing with currently, the difference is night and day. And with that comment alone, Trump possibly could have lost this election because he just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what we want in 2020. This is not 2016. And I'm not saying that Trump's going to lose, but you can see here that he's lost. Now he's on the defensive. Now he's defending his record as a politician, as the incumbent, and he was completely incapable of doing just that. Now, on top of that, there are a couple of moments where you can see Trump trying to strategically back Joe Biden into a corner. Um, but I don't necessarily know that this worked out in Trump's favor. So, for example, he accused Joe Biden of supporting socialism with regard to health care. Now, we all know that Joe Biden does not support socialism. I wish Joe Biden was a socialist and supported a socialist solution to health care reform, but that's not the reality. That didn't stop Trump from saying, oh, well, you support socialism. At least the Democratic Party does. Um, and what he was trying to do was get Joe Biden to condemn Medicare for all, condemn Bernie Sanders, and he took the bait to an extent, but it's not like that's anything that's new to leftists. We already know that he hates Bernie Sanders and he hates the left, but after basically suggesting that Joe Biden was being controlled by the left, then multiple times he said, oh, well, you just lost the left. And it happened again towards the end of the debate during the uh, climate change portion, I want to say, when Trump was talking about how Biden supports the Green New Deal and he trotted out all of the greatest hits that were, you know, made up by Fox News. Oh, well, Democrats want to ban airplane travel and hamburgers, which is completely false. It's a lie. But once he got Biden to say, I don't support the Green New Deal, then he said, oh, well, you just lost the left. But it's not like 
the left isn't aware of what we're getting with Joe Biden. We know exactly what we're getting. So this isn't a gotcha. And the reason why I think this might have actually hurt Donald Trump more so um, than I initially thought is because this makes Trump look like he's contradicting himself. Because on one hand, you're saying you're a socialist and you're being controlled by the left. But then minutes later, after Biden admits that he's not a socialist, then Trump says, oh, well, you lost the left. Well, which is it? Is he a socialist being controlled by the left? Or did he just lose the left and as a result lose the election? Like, do you understand? On top of that, Trump was able to switch like that and argue on both sides of the issue when attacking Joe Biden in a way that is just stunning. And it's not like it was subtle or anything like that. Like, people are going to notice. So, for example, he brought up the 1994 crime bill. And I thought he was actually going to start attacking Joe Biden for this. But he didn't. He just mentioned it and moved on. But he moved on to super predators. He says that Joe Biden said that black youth are super predators. However, he is mistaken because that was Hillary Clinton who called black youth super predators, at least publicly. I don't know what uh, Joe Biden said behind closed doors. But as far as we know, Joe Biden did not say that black youth are super predators. But that was the only criticism that he brought up with regard to the 1994 crime bill. So in and of itself, that isn't a very powerful critique. But to make matters worse, just minutes later, after accusing Joe Biden, at least insinuating that he is too tough on crime, then he blasts Joe Biden for not being tough enough on crime because Joe Biden refuses to say that he supports law and order. Again, which is it? Is Joe Biden too tough on crime? And are you the one who opts for criminal justice reform and freeing all the people that Joe Biden locked up? Or is he not tough enough on crime? Is he so weak that he's allowing the country to devolve into chaos because he won't even utter the words law and order? Come on, man. Trump is lost here. In an attempt to demonize Joe Biden, he lost the plot. He couldn't defend himself. And really, Trump had to have anticipated that his record would be up for a vote. I mean, this election basically is a referendum on Donald Trump's record. Do you want four more years of this? And he just focused on attacking Joe Biden. But in focusing all of that, you know, anger and attacks on Joe Biden, Joe Biden got in some pretty devastating blows. And there were moments where Trump genuinely embarrassed himself. When we're talking about COVID-19, for you to say, I brought back football is not something that we care about with regard to a presidential election, Donald Trump. Oh, I'm the one safe. that brought back football. By the way, I brought back Big Ten <laughs> football. <laughs> okay. It's just absolutely baffling that this was his performance. Um, you know, because in 2016, Donald Trump was belligerent and loud and obnoxious at these debates against Hillary Clinton. But at the same time, he managed to land a few blows that appealed to people like he criticized her for supporting the TPP and uh, interventions, wars. But now you can't criticize Joe Biden in that same way because you'd be a hypocrite. But Trump doesn't care about looking hypocritical. And as a result, it just looked like he was lost. So, you know, Joe Biden, he didn't have to have a stellar performance. All he needed to do was shut up and give Trump enough rope to hang himself. And I think that basically that's what happened. Although I will say it would have behooved Joe Biden to be a little bit more strong in the face of Donald Trump. And I said this on uh, the Doomed podcast with Matt Bender. If he just like stopped and turned around and pointed at Donald Trump and said, you need to be quiet. Or shut up. I mean, he told Trump to shut up, but just like to look him in the eye. I think that would have been a boss move that would have undercut this, I don't know, this strong man, macho thing that Trump was trying to go uh, for. And the thing is that like Trump clearly wanted to project himself as like this, this really strong person because he probably knows that people admire strength and leadership. But if you just interrupt someone over and over and over again, then that's an impediment to there being any substance. The debates can't happen if you won't shut the fuck up, even for a second. And it's clear why Donald Trump would not stop talking. It's because whenever he was actually quiet, when he didn't know what to say to defend himself, Joe Biden made some pretty good points. Uh, one point that Joe Biden made that I think was actually surprisingly uh, refreshing to hear from a neoliberal like Joe Biden was that, look, this economic recovery that we're seeing right now, it's been great for millionaires and billionaires, but not for the working class. Now, I don't expect Joe Biden to do much to benefit the working class, but just to call that out for optics purposes, 
I think that matters. I think that really matters a lot. You know, Joe Biden is playing the populist role that Trump played in 2016. And Trump is trying to recapture the magic of 2016. But you can see he's struggling. On top of that, Joe Biden made the point that we're not going to see a full economic recovery until we take care of COVID-19. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but it shows that he actually does have a plan, like he says. Donald Trump doesn't have a plan, hence why it's so bad. Like, in comparison with the developed world, we're doing the worst. Now, um, there was so much that stood out to me, but really what I think left a lasting impression on my mind is towards the end of the debate. Like, what we're looking for currently is someone who is a leader. There is unprecedented civil unrest in this country, uncertainty economically, a pandemic, and 200,000 Americans are dead. So we need you to be a leader. We need you to tell us it's going to be okay. At least the average viewer who's tuning in, if they're undecided, needs to hear that. And they didn't get that from Donald Trump. I think that Joe Biden, you know, he tried to connect with Americans by just, you know, trying to tune out Donald Trump and look directly into the camera. And I think that it's corny. He's obviously pandering. But at the same time, I think that something like that may land because at least he's pretending to care about average Americans, whereas Donald Trump, he couldn't stop talking about how mean the media and Democrats were to him. When we don't care about you, we care about what's happening right now. And to go back to, you know, the last portion of the debate and what left the biggest impression was Trump's response to committing to concede and not influence his supporters to do violence. First of all, Trump did not commit to tell his supporters to not do violence. He told the Proud, Proud Boys when he was asked to condemn white supremacist groups like them to stand down and stand by. Proud, Proud Boys, Boys stand back and stand by. And after that, he actively encouraged his own supporters. He urged his supporters on national television to do what is effectively voter intimidation. You go Urging first. my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. He's setting us up for a complete shit show. Like, he is going to put us on the brink of a civil war. Like, not to be hyperbolic, I don't think it's going to come to that, but he wants people to be against each other because he thrives in the midst of chaos. And this device of rhetoric currently, in the midst of a pandemic and uncertainty, I just don't think it's going to play well. I can't see how this will play well. Now, at the same time, I can see how coming away from this, you know, you can be turned off by Donald Trump, but did Joe Biden give you enough to be encouraged and energized to vote for him? I mean, if you value handling COVID-19 like a grown-up, sure, but, you know, this is basically a default win for Joe Biden, in my estimation. It seems as if the reason why I think Joe Biden won is because Trump talked himself into a losing position and he didn't know when to press pause and shut the fuck up. And that's why ultimately I think Biden won. He came away better. And Trump needed to do enough, have a good, good enough performance, have some big enough moments to, you know, change the trajectory of this race and I just don't think that he did that and when you see early polls showing that it seems as if people believe Biden won you know um it's looking good currently for Joe Biden but having said that I do not believe this election is a foregone conclusion I think Trump can still pull off a victory because a lot can change between now and November 3rd and not just like electorally speaking with regard to you know who's going to win but in terms of civil unrest and just overall instability within the country. So, you know, this debate, it broke my brain. Um, I'm feeling very uh, pessimistic about the outcome. And um, I, it's just honestly still difficult to process what we all just watched. I feel like I lost a few brain cells. And honestly, like, that was genuinely draining to the extent that I struggled to even articulate how to describe that. I think Andrew Yang put it best, where he said, you know, I feel like Joe Biden won, but Americans lost. I tend to agree with that. It, it seems like 
Nobody won in that debate. I think Biden maybe won by default. But again, this is all subjective. Like my debate analyses, it's all subjective because I think that, you know, there was enough that happened to where if you were a MAGA chud, you could say, oh, clearly Trump demolished Joe Biden. Or if you're a Biden supporter, you can you can say, look, he clearly was more composed. He acted like a grown up. But, you know, I think that going into future debates, Joe Biden shouldn't be as composed. I think he should get a little bit angry, right? There's a lot to be angry over. So sh show some human emotion. And I think that will actually work wonders with the electorate. They want to know that you're fired up and angry and fighting for them. So I'll leave that there because I feel like at this point I'm just rambling. What we saw was a spectacle to say the least. And um, I am just more than ready for this election to be over, even if I'm dreading the week of the election, um, assuming we don't get the results on election night, because, oh my God, it may be a bigger shit show th than the debate. And, you know, mentally and emotionally, I'm not ready for that shit. <laughs> and I cover politics for a living, so I should be amped up right now, but I'm fucking tired, and I feel like everyone else is as well. And, uh, you know, it's not just the left, it's everyone. Like, everyone is tired, and Trump didn't sense that like he didn't get that he still thinks this is 2016 and maybe you know bringing out that 2016 belligerent anti-establishment quote anti-establishment playbook is going to work for him again but you know i tend to think otherwise but you know we'll we'll have to wait and see mike is the worst progressive on youtube please don't subscribe to him or become a patron David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?